Hey, I'm Bosco from Orange Pixel. Um, hang on, just let me get this one. The residual Kickstarter, and again, if you haven't watched the previous four videos, I've talked about the Kickstarter residual link below. Right now, as I'm recording this, I have six days to go and 86% funded. Let me just um, show you over here. 86%, 6200, 208 backers, six days to go. Um, that's doable, I think. Uh, the funny thing is by the time this video goes live and you're watching it right now, the Kickstarter is over. Um, I'm just gonna say, yay, we did it. I think it should be doable, right? Six days, 86%. I just hope we made it. Um, you know right now you can check it, but right now, I don't know. Um, six days to go. Anyway, um, doesn't matter if the Kickstarter made it or not. Of course, it does matter and I hope it made it. But either way, I'm gonna create a video on this whole Kickstarter campaign and the whole process in the last 30 days because it's been an interesting couple of weeks. So uh, there's gonna be a video about that whole process and everything I can tell and share about it and all the things I've learned and six days guys, 86% funded. We got this. Anyway, um, enough about the Kickstarter. Let's do the intro and then let's talk about Switch and maybe a few other consoles. Okay, so I haven't been just working on residual. I've been doing a bunch of stuff, um, namely for the Switch. Right now we have well, a large collection of games. And of course, most of the work on these games is done by Friedel. I talked about a few weeks ago. He is porting all my Java games over to Mono Game and then we got them running on the Switch. Um, Meganoid is the first that's gonna be released. The date is September the 8th. It's going to be available on, in September and exciting, actually. I have no idea how it goes, how things go. I'll have to contact a bunch of Nintendo press game sites or maybe streamers. If you know anybody that you follow or you, if you have a Nintendo game site that you really look for all the news, drop it in the comments below because I'm, I'm going to need a large list and a good list for the biggest sites out there. And um, we're going to be releasing games. The second game will be Space Grunts. I'm already planning it for the first week of October. So uh, September, Meganoid, October, Space Grunts. And the months after that, we'll be releasing more games. We right now have Gunslugs, Heroes of Loot, Meganoid, Heroes of Loot 2 is, got a little bit of a bug in there, but we're fixing it. Space Grunts, um, we'll be bringing a bunch more games. The next game is already being developed. That's Stardash. I know there's a lot of Stardash and Nintendo fans, so Stardash is a no-brainer to put it on Switch. I was first a bit hesitating on putting Stardash on the Switch, but the game is still extremely uh, a lot of fun. Once you once you start Stardash, it will grab you and really Stardash is going to be on the Switch, no doubt about it. I'll talk about it more once we have something playable because I think it's going to be a perfect match for the Nintendo Switch, having Stardash on there. So um, anyway, I've been doing a lot of stuff on the Switch version stuff, because um, even though I don't have to touch all that code, I still have to prepare the eShop pages, uh, prepare trailers that need a lot of special stuff happening, a uh, Switch logo, uh, an end slate, and I've been preparing images and, and all that stuff just to get things up and running. So uh, it's, it's been a busy year so far and the year isn't done just yet. And all the rewards for all that hard work is just gonna be at the end of this year, which is uh, interesting business-wise to see. Uh, we have no idea how these games will perform. Actually, I hope they will do pretty good and pretty well, but we have no idea and we have, can't measure it with other games. And it's just gonna be releasing a bunch of games and hope they do great. But we won't know until the end of the year. So. Um, a lot of hard work so far, also from Friedel and, and respect for him because so far it's all on revenue share basis. So we're not making any money on all this work we put into. 
We're just going to be making money once the game sells. So um, lots of respect for him to dive into this project with me. And, um, give him a shout out in the comments as well, because I know he's watching every now and then. So well done. Now, um, time for the topic of the week. Residual, as every week, there's a lot of new stuff. So the first of the big new features this week is wind. I've added a whole wind system and I probably should have done that much sooner in the game development because now I had to go through a lot of code to factor in the wind factor. Wind will pretty much, uh, it will it just blows around left and right. It's a 2D game, so there's just wind coming from left or right. It has a certain strength. It's uh, different on every planet and that strength varies a little bit over time. So uh, the effects so far are very little because I just implemented the system and now I need to figure out all the fun stuff we can do with it. But simple things like smoke will show you where the wind is going and the things hanging from trees will move around in the wind. Um, if it's a very strong wind and you're running against it, you'll notice that you'll be running slower and jumping will also be slightly affected by it. But then again, if you have the wind in your back and you jump, you'll be able to jump slightly further than normal. So um, there are a couple of creatures that float on the wind. So if there is wind, they will float in a certain direction. And rest, I just have to come up with interesting things to use this mechanic. Um, perhaps if I don't come up with any better solution than these things, it might be removed completely. Or we just might keep it like this and um, not use it in anything else. For now, there's a wind system and it was a fun and interesting challenge to implement it and get it working with everything. Next on the list is adding a phaser, but wait, it's not a gun, still not a gun. You can't use it against any creatures or animals or anything, but you can use it to um, crumble down certain rocks. Those rocks were originally designed to be exploded by little cactus bombs, which didn't make a lot of sense. That's still a possibility though, but we now have this phaser, which allows me to put much more of these blocks in the player's path. So far, I've been using these blocks just in the path that the player doesn't really need to go, so the alternate areas of the level. So right now we can place those type of blocks anywhere because I know the player will be able to destroy those things. Now the phaser is um, powered by your suit because I also added solar power to your suit and other gadget might at some point be powered up by your suit, which does mean if you're doing it in the cave, there is not a lot of sunlight, so your suit will slowly empty and you won't be able to use your phaser or any of the other gadgets. And you'll have to find either a pocket of sunlight somewhere in the cave or go all the way back to your ship using your field generator to quickly teleport and regenerate or recharge your suit. So I think that adds another little funny element. Um, you can use a phaser for anything you want, but if your suit has no more power, Neither does your phaser or any other of the other gadgets. So I think it's an interesting element. I also added a couple of new resources to the mix. Uh, we now have gemstones and they can be found when destroying these rocks. So again, one feature leads to the next, as I explained in last week's video. Uh, these gemstones will be used by maybe crafting certain things or haven't really given them any purpose just yet, but they are in the game, so they're gonna have some purpose at some point. I um, also added silicon, which is required to create certain gadgets like the woofer I explained last week. That's now gonna be needing some silicon. You can't find silicon, you have to actually uh, refine it from graphite, which was added last week. So now we have a refinery to create silicon from graphite and the game is suddenly becoming bigger and better and more interesting in terms of what you can and can't do. And my final addition was um, something I drew last week. Um, this is a little level template. This is how I create new level ideas and templates. This is pretty much one screen and the idea is that you have something you can uh, pull like a sort of switch. You can hang on it, swing on it and pull it. And when you activate it, there will be little elevators coming up for just a short amount of time. And you have to run over them and they will be gone again. So uh, this is just a little element I drew and now I actually created it, which meant I had to uh, create this switch, have it swingable and have it activate by the player. 
Um, then I had to create these elevators, which means drawing them and creating the code that makes them go up and down as soon as something is switched on. Then create a level block that mixes these things in one area and then do a lot of testing to make sure it actually works. I did come to one conclusion. Um, when I drew this, I my mind goes, well, it would be fun if the player does this, 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 and then gets there. The problem is the player doesn't always do this, 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 and get there. Sometimes the player does this, then drops down, falls, and gets nowhere. Something I didn't really think about. So I had to come up with a solution and uh, it's not implemented just yet, but I think I'm gonna be adding two gameplay modes or a setting. One is permadeath. If you drop down there, you're dropping on spikes, you'll be dead, game over. You're not surviving on a planet if you drop down a pit. That's gonna be for the hardcore gamer. The other option is not permadeath and it will just uh, restore to your last position or maybe you'll just black out and you'll find yourself back at the ship. Somehow maybe that little robot hovering above you can somehow teleport you back to ship whatever so um those are two modes that we're gonna be adding to the game but that's it for this week's video or maybe i should should i tell you about i can tell you about it right yeah i can i'm i'm an indie game developer i can tell you things i don't have to ask anybody right uh we're doing a switch version of all my games which runs in mono game and that same build with small tweaks can also run on other consoles. So right now we're looking at Xbox first because that's the easiest one to get onto. Um, Meganoid, Space Runs, all those games, we're gonna be looking at it for the Xbox. I just submitted all that info to Microsoft and we'll see. Hopefully beginning next year, we'll also have version on the Xbox and we'll also be looking at PlayStation for all my games and also residual. So. Um, don't know if all these things come true just yet. Just something to think about. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about all that stuff I just talked about. And if you have great Nintendo press sites or streamers, drop them in the comments below. I just need to know because I'm gonna contact all of them and uh, they'll have to just write about these games because why not? Anyway, that's it for this week's video. Uh, see you next week, bye. Needs to be tilted slightly up so that you can actually see my whole face. And we're gonna talk about Switch after this clip because this clip is probably a blooper and not gonna be used in the video at all. <laughs>